Hello, and welcome to this week's episode of Pit Against a Live Flesh and Blood Call In Show. I'm joined by my constant co host, Kevin Smurf Murphy. Kevin, what's up? Yo. And we're joined by. Introduce yourself. My name is Sculling Fleshback, aka Simon, I guess. Yeah. Um, I'm 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 tired. It's one a.m. <laughs> let's go. Let's so, go. I, I think uh, I think that sums it up. So Heck yeah, I'm yeah. calling it from uh, from the UK. Woo! Based in London. All right. So if you don't know, Pit Against is a live call-in show. If you, not him, but you would like to be on live air talking to us right now, join the Pit Against Discord by clicking the link that's in the description or that Kevin has just put in chat. I did. Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, and uh, join the waiting room channel and if you, put a hot take in the topics channel and we'll pull you in uh, for a mic check and bring you on air. Uh, but first, uh, Kevin has an apology he has to make. Hey, you do too. Okay. Um, no, uh, Trounce is a way better card than I thought. Um, but in Victor exclusively because guaranteeing clashes, he gets to have that value more often. I underestimated how often he would be winning clashes and also how many clashes he would get. Um, I think that might've been before, um, I don't know how many cards we had seen at the time if we had the whole set. We had the whole set last Thursday. Um, but yeah, I, I definitely underestimated Trounce in, in in a decent number of Victor's matchups. He has to sideboard it out in some, but it is like a zero for like nine, ten in the matchups where it hits. Also, I was very down last week when we were talking about uh, a couple of the cards in the set. Miller's Grindstone, I thought was dog water. And I still am disappointed when I get a minus one counter on it. But the games where I get a minus one counter is about one in every six. Like, I am winning those clashes. But I'm also not getting a big variety of heroes that I'm playing against on Talishar. But... Uh, I'm winning those clashes. It feels good. Yeah, and you can also choose to side it out. Yeah, Miller's Grindstone, actually kind of insane. Even if it had one power, I actually kind of really like its on hit of milling the top card of the deck. That, oh, it's... You're such a control. It feels good when it happens. So good. Oh, it feels so good. All right. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right, so we we brought you on because you had an interesting take or... There's been a lot of discussion on Twitter lately about the change in Nationals invites, right? Someone have a yeah. better way to phrase it than I do? Nope. Um, well, no, that's it. <laughs> yeah, so so what was the change? Who knows off the top of their head? Because I can't quite remember. So the changes to the way National Championships work is you cannot uh, qualify on XP anymore. Um, this is a change they're making post- LA for everything is there's no more XP qualifications for any invite only events, any tier four events or tier three events, uh, in, which I believe nationals is the only invite is the only invite only tournament at tier three. Um, but they're removing all XP, uh, qualification for them, um, which people were pretty unhappy with 90 day XP was a very common way to qualify for Nats, uh, last year for the U S. Um, I know I was just kind of, I didn't care too much in RTN season because I knew that I would qualify on 90 day XP if I didn't qualify through RTNs. Um, so now the only ways to uh, qualify for some nationals are RTNs or ELO. Um, if the nationals is big enough, uh, so like cap 96 and up, uh, you it is invite only. So it is RTNs, ELO, and PTIs. So um, the only... And then below, the, yeah, uh, I was going to say the only... Only Worlds Pro Tours and National Champs are invite only. All other events are open entry. Yes. And the Calling is the only other Tier 3 event. So Callings are Tier 3, but National they are open as well. entry. Yeah. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so, like, US Nats is capped at 600. The qualification is RTNs, ELO, or PTIs. They take the RTN list and the PTI list. Uh, they fill up however many spaces that is, and then they qualify the next however many people out of ELO. So the same thing that they did with XP, they're doing with ELO where it rolls down um, to however many people. So we'll probably still have the top 
400 US players in combined ELO at qualified for Nats, whether that's through RTNs or their ELO roll down. Um, and then the other so I have a question probably be from RTNs. Mm. Go ahead. What is combined ELO? So, right? combined... so mm -hmm. we don't, I don't think we know, right? I think we assume, but they haven't officially communicated what combined ELO is, right? And I think that's that that's a bit of the issue that i have with it is like you know that's fine if you want to do that but you're presenting us with a way to qualify for something that we don't know how it works so we're now what two weeks before rtn season starts and we don't know how that works so wouldn't it Reacting. just have been better to announce that in the same way it's like okay this is combined deal this is how it works i mean we can assume they're just gonna you know smash the two numbers together and divide them by so Two? my yeah so my understanding from combined elo is i don't know that they've made a detailed post about it but my understanding is they're literally going to go through your entire rated match history and start your elo over from 1500 just counting over all of those matches because they oh, have all that okay. match history it's huh. in your gem profile i yeah. guess they can just run an algorithm to just so get they can all literally of just rerun all the matches assuming that any rated match goes on elo is instead that a, of separating the limited and constructed is that so, so basically all oh, right okay is that a public number okay. like will we know what combined elo looks like like a player's you can, can you look up a player's combined elo like yeah, yeah, yeah. right now for constructed i assume i'd be surprised if you couldn't so it is it is like a little over three weeks out right so february 17th yes. it's I, it's like three I weeks assume, and two days out i my guess is we will be getting it the exact like how to get combined elo even if they don't run it necessarily i think we'll probably get it the monday or a week after release of heavy hitters mm. is when they'll announce that is my guess because right. i do I'm think they should that announce it before rtns go write that it. down um that is my understanding of combined elo or where they would get it i don't think they're just going to average the two numbers that's not actually representative of your skill level as a player if you've played 10 times more constructed yeah. games than limited games like i have um so yeah i, I get um, that but mm -hmm. you know it's it's an assumption yeah. right it is and, For and now, i think yeah. that's i think that's that's probably yes. why this has become such a hot topic right because they've announced something but they've left a lot up for for interpretation Right, so you know, I, mm -hmm. I think that's at least in over here in the UK in the community, that's kind of what the question is. Well, how does it work? How does that work? Right. I think sure. another hot point on this is, uh, if I may just right dive into it. It's yeah, like, go ahead. So, go ahead. You know, if you if your Elo is pretty bad right now, and Elo di didn't matter so far, now suddenly it matters. There's really very little chance for you to fix that, and you know, people are saying. You know, you should create the second account, restart at fifteen hundred. Well, definitely and, don't do that. Um, no, I'm not. I'm oh, not you should. <laughs> but but you yeah, know, yeah. for somebody that is under fifteen hundred, like you know, maybe you know, look look at myself, right? I started playing Flesh and Blood. I turned up to some Elo events. I don't care. It was about fun, right? It didn't matter. Yeah. It had no impact. I just played all the games, right? You you can't progress in a tournament anymore. So you're like, I don't know, one and three. But you want to keep playing for the experience, whatever. But you lose yeah. a couple more games. And now that has an impact on your rating that now directly impacts if you're going to qualify or not. Um, it's just like the, the timing seems bad for me. I, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put it this way. If they'd announced this a month ago, it wouldn't change it. Because you don't have that many rated events to go to. So yeah. like when they announced this is not a huge issue to me. The other half of this is qualifying for nationals through an RTN is much easier than qualifying for a pro tour through a pro quest. Getting top four is much easier to do than winning yeah. one of these events. If you think you're uh, like, I'm not trying to like be snarky on this one, but like if you're ELO, Tar target you me, you're ELO, tell me, target you. Yeah, I'm I'm trying to get I, to I'm, nationals I'm, right I'm, now. Or you're, either of us, really. Okay. If you think your elo is going to be in the top 200 or whatever your country your requirements are which actually like the cap for uk being 160 is actually a little bit lower than i would expect that might be like actually a bigger issue than like the elo stuff in my opinion um 
if you think your elo yeah. would be good enough to qualify like your actual skill level is good enough no, not not elo, your, your skill level you are the top your skill level yes the elo that represents your skill level yeah would qualify you for nats then you should be able to top for an rta an rta yeah. because you only need to do it once you don't need to do it two or three times and you have yeah. four weeks of okay. rtns top like, four that's, is pretty yeah, that's, that's my thing is like your skill level can absolutely move faster than your elo and the the system is kind of set up to account for that. Like, I'm also, so I'm a pretty casual player. I'm a very casual player, but I surround myself with a lot of smart people and uh, I play regularly or semi-regularly. Um, I don't do testing, but uh, I think that if I, if I decided right now, no, if I decided probably when RTN season starts that I'm going to try to win or try to get a top four to go to nationals, like get an invite through RTNs. I feel like I have the ability to do that. Like I, mm. the amount I, of good players in my region are, is a lot, but it's like, if it's top four, there's a lot of wee leeway right there of people. Yes. Like there, I can consistently have three really good players above me, get fourth and get an invite. As well as just like if you just hit a quarterfinal where someone doesn't want to play it out because they already have their invite, that's just it, it. happens. Yes, but 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 they now they've reintroduced gold, yes. gold foils, right? Which they have. means they have. Uh, so you're mm -hmm. gonna have players that are farming the events to try get multiple. We had that in the UK last year where you know a guy kept yeah. showing up and just going to win the event so he could get the gold. Or the cold foils. That's fair enough, right? If yeah. that's what you're not yeah. gonna do for the card, that's fair enough, right? No, I know. Um, but you don't need but, to be as good uh, as that guy. You don't need to be as good as that guy. <laughs> you need to be as good as the fourth place person, which is yes, right. No, I so, need to be better. Well, you need, yeah, yeah, yeah. You need to be yeah. better than the fourth place person. Um, we also have a thing where, or we had a thing where there was some locals. Uh, there was at least one local that I can think of who was trying to top four events at RTNs to lower the amount of people who would get invites because they were like, okay, I know a person and they were just like, I want to top four as many RTNs as possible so that less people get invited. And I understand that's that one. That's not how that works. Is that <laughs> exactly. how it does it roll down? <laughs> yeah. Um, so I think if you qualify they... twice, uh, on an RTN, yes. so basically there's a m one more spot on the EO or XP in yes. the past, right? So, yes. yeah. So it actually it just makes doesn't it doesn't pass harder. down in the same. Yeah, so it doesn't pass down in the same RTN, right? So if you know if the Correct. top person wins, it doesn't pass down to the fifth, but it you know is, a slot becomes available on on the ladder. I guess. Yeah. So. The way Nats worked last year was they ha took all the RTN and PTI people and they, it was say 450 or 500 people. Okay. And then they removed all those people from the 90 day XP leaderboard. Okay. And then they invited the next, the top 100 people that remained. Oh, okay. Out to cap. They invited out to cap. So no matter what, there's 600 invites going out. Then what yeah. was their goal? I, to I don't people know out maybe? an RTX like, season. Weird. No, that actually okay. Because no, but I, don't I mean, know like about last year, this year mm. it actually makes Nats harder. Yeah, if you do yeah. that, because you get more high elo players. <laughs> or maybe that's what they wanted. No, that would just be I don't know. And regardless, like a bad bad take, bad take on their part. Yes, um, trash take. Interesting. Okay. So, like, okay. Okay. Also, like last RTN season, the prizing was very, um, was not top heavy whatsoever. Cold mm. Foil Jubil being the first place prize was such a low stakes prize that a lot of people just literally didn't play it out. If they had their invite, they got their top yeah. eight, they got their Cold Foil hero and left. Oh, That's we don't know. We don't know the Cold Foil. Is it random Cold Foil? It's a gold cold. Gold, yeah. gold foil. Yeah. It is a yeah. gold foil, and, and like PQ. Top eight gets a uh, rainbow foil hero. Yes, they get rainbow foil heroes, oh, which is also yeah. lower prizing than like a cold foil yeah. hero, which they can't yeah. do the cold foil heroes because they have marvels well, yeah. of all these adult heroes. Um, and they can't I do a Ryan R1 one because that. I, yeah. I'm okay with it, but it also means that people aren't going to be. There's going to be way less um, people who make 
top eight and then just concede their top eight if they have an invite already yeah because like i i did that last season last rtn season i made top eight or like i went 3-0 in a five round swiss so i had locked top eight i conceded to another friend who was 3-0 to get give them better seating yeah I conceded to another person to scoop them into top eight. And then I was paired against that last person again, and they didn't have their invite, and I already did. And I conceded that. I played three yeah. games of Flesh and Blood that day. <laughs> yeah. Like, but that was, the system was set up where that kind of worked. Yeah. And you were only incentivized to make top eight. And, like, the argument of, I don't know, like, I, I think it's still going to be fine. I think the cap for UK should probably be 240. That's that was the next question I was going to so ask, we, right? So like e, cap for we had 128 last year. So they they opted from 128 okay. to 160. So they did adjust it. Um mm -hmm. so it's gone up. Yeah. Yeah, it okay. has. Yeah. What was the cap for US last year? Was that 600, 500? 512? So it's gone up a bit. It's gone up maybe roughly the same percentage. Uh, is 600 no. is 600 is 160 enough for the uk i don't know how big the player base know. is there compared to the us i don't know that the that that's enough for the uk i might be kind of getting skewed by just looking at europe as a whole because typically when there's a european event a lot of all of the european countries will show up yeah um yeah. so i mean my my take is that it's probably enough uh, and I might get some, sl you know, I I might be putting no, you're fine. hot water here with you. Guys. <laughs> that is what we are doing, is we are trying to dunk each other in hot water. Um, I, I think for for purely how many people are going to attend, it's it's enough. It's probably not f enough for how many people would like to qualify. But out of those 160, sure. there's probably like 20 or so who's not going to who are not going to be able to attend. I think there's there's actually a big debate that's going on. It's like you know there's basically as you said, there's like only like three closed tournament stars, right? Three tournaments that you need to qualify that isn't yeah. open for anyone that was... Go but there's an argument that people say well, it should be like a community celebration, right? It should be like something for the UK community. And mm -hmm. if you qualify through RTN, you get a, like a first round buy or something, something like that. So everybody can attend. People get mm -hmm. a buy if they if they qualify, right? So they have an advantage, but it should be a celebration that anybody that wants to go can go. Okay. That, that's like one side of the um, argument. First round buy. Sure. Is it, I, I, I believe I've heard LSS is huge, hugely against first round buy, right? Is that right? I wouldn't be surprised. I don't know that I've heard anything. Um, I will say like the difference I assume between like UK Nats and US Nats has got to be wild because like US Nats has a calling that's run alongside it people from all over North America show up like the can the Canadian scene always rolls down to US Nats just to play the calling. And then we have all of Friday events still like the the disparity between US Nats and every other Nats is kind of crazy. Yeah. yeah. Um and that's Didn't what you're Yuki about, win our like, last calling? Yeah, Yuki won our last calling. <laughs> that was funny. That was great actually. She rolled me in round 4. It was filthy. Um Oh, you played her. Oh my gosh. Yeah. That's cool. She she pushed 18 damage through a channel like Frigid. Uh, <laughs> uh huh. <laughs> if anyone could, it would yeah. be Yuki. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. No, it's and even then, it's like if you don't qualify for Nats, it feels kind of bad. But like you still get to go and play yeah. three days of Flesh and Blood with everyone else, and half the time the people that are in Nats that you know are done by Friday or Saturday, and then they're doing the same thing you are. So, like, that disparity in just kind of the event planning, not event planning, but, like, the opportunity at the event is definitely real. But I don't know how to remedy that until just scenes get bigger. I, I have a question. Uh, are you going to Nats if you do not get an invite? Not Kevin. Simon. Um... It depends. Okay, okay. Uh, depends uh, actually, what... a better question is, how far away is it from you? Yeah. I, we don't know. Oh. Oh, do we not know where oh, it is? Yeah. That, that's, that's, another, that's another issue, right? It's like we're we running into US our, our game set. Well, it's like we don't know where it's going to be. I don't think we even know the exact date, right? Which is, it's like, 
why should I try qualify for something I don't know what uh, if I can attend so, it or not? But, this is this is yeah this has been a thing that LSS has done or had somewhat issues with before um where like i remember pt baltimore was announced like a week before pq season started um i think la la was announced reasonably before that pq season started if i recall correctly um they're but, getting better yeah, at it we, they are definitely they're, not they're getting better there yet they're they're not I where they want to be ramping, they're not where they're, they want to be or where the community wants them to be, which, like, I fully acknowledge that they have gotten much better about it. Absolutely. Like, we already know where Amsterdam, where PT5 is going to be. We know yeah. it's in Amsterdam. We know when. Um, we so, only know U.S. Nats. So let's say right it's now. a, um, what's, like, a reasonable drive that, like, Kevin would make? Like, four hours? Would you make a four-hour event for Nats? drive to Nats? I would probably do six to eight. Okay, let's on. say let's say six hours. Would you, Simon, yeah. do a six-hour drive to nationals if you didn't get the invite? So first of all, I don't have a car. <laughs> oh, Frank. Uh, so no, what, they have a good train I, would I take? Would you do the six-hour six walk or the <laughs> or the six-hour train ride or whatever? Hours? Yeah, hike. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, no, I, 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 I think I would if I knew that there were like side events with high enough. Um, high tier players right because as i said like my goal this year is pro tour amsterdam and my mm. goal this year is to play as many high profile and great players as possible so if i get that opportunity at nats the answer is yes right but it depends what the side event structure looks like so last year we had a super army on friday i wouldn't travel for that but i'd travel for like there was a pti on sunday i mean maybe I mean, uh, I don't that's going to have all the players who are in that. Yeah, yeah, every, yeah, every, yeah, 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 yeah true. Three. And getting a PTI no, I, is I think, definitely incentive. So, yeah, I think I would. I think so. I think the the farthest you probably have to travel in the UK would be like four to five hours, and and that's uh, oh, I, I forget. I think last year was like not three all the hours. countries are the size of US. <laughs> oh, that's, no, no, that's I'm at, that's UK I'm at every small. UK event then. What yeah, the heck? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I basically go to every major UK event. Uh, I've basically been to every one, uh, mm -hmm. or at least all of them that I can remember. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I mean, I'll I was going to try to convince you to just go to Nats anyways if you don't get it, because it going to these Tier 3 events, Tier 3, Tier 4 events, are amazing. I love them so much. Yeah. So, absolutely. What were you going to say, Kevin? Yeah, yeah. Um. I, I want to make one note here. If your goal is to make PT Amsterdam, I don't, I don't want you to care about who you might or might not get to play against at Nats. Because the people who are at Nats playing any event want to be there and play the game competitively. Yeah. E whether or not you know their name. It yeah. doesn't yeah, matter. No, no, no. That's, just, that's what I mean. I want to play the game at a high level. Right? That's like... Okay. I don't want to play Armory or we're just going to have a beer and we're going to have fun and we're going to mess around. And yeah, of course, you can turn it ba turn back. Yeah. So like, no, it's serious. We're playing a pro level. We're trying yeah. to win this thing. That's, it, that's, it's, that's yeah, what I want. Competitive level right? events. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Man, yeah, we're, we're talking about spoiled. something. We're, we're just spoiled for Armory quality, aren't we? Williams? Yes. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> so like I had Kevin, who I consider like at least a semi-pro uh flesh and blood player we have tim the store champion two years running three three years running we, have we only we people. only had and then and then we had mara ferris who's like yeah everyone knows mara ferris and then we also have um i've uh, heard of her but <laughs> <laughs> and then we have um uh merrick comes up sometimes for big events yeah we mm. our our pq merrick scene Kim. is crazy so like yeah. our regular our regular store has multiple people who have played pro tours and mara yeah, yeah. and then our pq scene is like i think the pq that i won six of the eight in top eight were day two pro tour baltimore players mm. so a like lot, just a lot of good names around us yeah um, so like yeah. Our, i i forget sometimes that our armory scene is a little spoiled no for, i i don't forget <laughs> i don't for forget for a drive. single minute i have I to play you against don't. you losers <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm I'm lucky. It's pretty similar here. Um, so 
Alex Kitsu is the current UK yep. champion. He comes around to our army That's every now cool. and then. We have Jason Rolf. He went 10th at uh, UK Nats. We had uh, Shamir Sami uh, before he moved yeah. away. Um, yeah. He was pretty good at Pro Tour. He, he's, he was a re regular at Wars. So, right. um, you know, I, I got okay, to play yeah, a yeah. lot against Shamir, and it's, it's, it's fun. <laughs> it's, I mean, it's, oh, it's yeah. great something. because he's You're a learning great guy. You're learning something, yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but no, he's, no Shamir good. is also just a great guy. Like, he's just oh, yeah, fun he's, to be he's around. Awesome. And... Absolutely awesome. Yeah. 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 So we're talking about ever. how every event at Nationals is probably going to be a learning event of some kind because you're going to be running against people that are going to be trying their hardest to win these kind of events. You know, everyone's playing their heart out. Uh, except people for people who are probably in the yeah. same same position as you, trying to get to yeah. that like PT level. So uh, the except for one group of misfit kids, which has to be the like UPF players. There's the there's UPF probably going to be yeah the UPF event. There's probably going to be a UPF event, I assume. <laughs> and those, I I love them. UPF is the best way to play Flesh of Blood, in my opinion. There's, there's two groups at the. Uh, UPF I hear that's event. your favorite. Uh... It is. It is what the the whole channel started with, and it's 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 just so good, dude. Um, there's oh, two I've never played UPF. UPF. <laughs> you got to try it. You got to try it once. Have you ever played Commander? I try, but just never had the chance. No, I've I've never uh, like uh, Flesh and Blood is my first TCG. So. Oh, okay, yes. cool. Yes. Yeah. You're you're in good company with Kevin. Um, so oh, yeah. <laughs> nice. So UPF is, we were talking earlier, Kevin and I were talking about how UPF might be the only truly casual format, you know, like it's, it's, so there's a lot of formats that are not as competitive or not as, um, what's, what's the word I'm talking about? When people say like, what's is like coin flippy or whatever, it's not, it's not like CC and the fact that it's not, there's a word I'm missing. Um, but it, like, it doesn't have as much competitive integrity. To yeah, the that's phrase of the. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's exactly week. it. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> um, so, so there's other formats that don't have the same level of competitive integrity that CC probably does. But UPF is probably the most truest casual format in the sense that, yes. like, if you play UPF, you get to play the game, right? If a new player plays against Kevin and he's like, he's ramping up for the upcoming season. And this was last year. So he's playing Icelander. They don't play the game. They get to sit there and watch Kevin play uh, because the game, we were talking earlier about how the game is so numbers based driven and that you can just be completely outclassed uh, before you're able to do anything. Um, what were you going to say? Which is actually a good argument for getting rid of XP, right? Because you can actually go to an armory and if XP doesn't matter for something like nationals qualification, then, you know, you get less people showing up because they just want to get the XP, right? I'm not saying that you do that, right? But, <laughs> but I do th we do have people which are pretty good just going around armories and just like destroying everyone so they can get the XP because, you know, you never know if you're going to qualify through an RTN or not. You, you probably are yes. if you're on that level. But still, you know, it's like, first of all, we like to play games. We like yeah. to play a lot of games. And why not maximize your chances? Right. So I think yeah. it, it can get pretty sweaty. And even people are like on on the fringe that might just quote get in through XP, like they take the games really seriously then when you maybe you shouldn't. Maybe you should just have a fun out, night out with friends, right? I'm not mm -hmm. saying you're not trying to win, but you know, it's like an army is it's like, you know, it should be fun. It's like yeah. don't go there to destroy people, go there to have a good time. Yeah, no, I there there is some number of people that were just farming armories and online events and stuff yeah. like that to just try and qualify through XP and like I, I think I do agree that it is inherently a good thing that XP is not a qualification for... If I have to pick between XP and ELO, I'm going to pick ELO as the Nats qualification because I think that is just better for the game and it's better for Nationals to have that sort of prestige where it's like it's an accomplishment that you're there where XP didn't quite give that necessarily. Um, but also, I 100% agree, like, at Armories, like, Mara, Tim, and I 
probably never played our main decks for the last eight months before yeah. I moved. Like, they still won a wouldn't. couple. They still won several armories, but still, they were yeah, they were like, not like dumpstering kids. But what I was gonna bring up before y'all derailed it back to the last conversation was uh the new fabled. Oh yeah. The new oh, fabled. Yeah. Oh, you were seg oh you were segueing into I was that. I was attempting to <laughs> and y'all segued right the frick back. All right, so the new oh, fabled yeah. deathmatch arena in in heavy hitters is a um it's turn turn sideways on my screen. It's a uh, it's a legendary. Uh, it's legendary costs, keyword. Yeah, legendary keyword. Generic action landmark. Cost zero. Doesn't pitch. Doesn't block. Doesn't attack. Go again. Uh, landmark. Heroes can attack any opposing hero. Uh, when a hero deals lethal damage to another hero, they create gold tokens equal to the number of heroes who started this game. That's kind of cool. But it does fully cement one thing, which is that one of my early gripes on the channel and something we stirred away from really quickly in UPF is it's suggested in UPF that you do not attack to your right and that you only attack to your right and left and you have to break the combat chain in order to target someone else. We thought those two rules needed to go away. Everyone needed to just be cool and not gang up on one person. But in order to have a more even game, you could just target whoever you wanted so that no one person can get out of control and the two people beside them can't do anything about it because they're under the hammer of whatever that person is, is whatever strength that person has. And then everyone else at the table can't touch that guy. So we wanted to do away with that rule and... This card kind of says that they definitely don't want to. They printed a card to do away with that rule. But it's a huge mistake. Tell me why it's a huge mistake. Okay. The only people who are going to buy this card are the collectors who want to own every card. Nobody's I kinda going want this to card. buy this card to play it. No, I, I want this card this to play it. You want it because you, you're you UPF nut, not because yeah. you actually, <laughs> you're never going to actually play it to play it. There are tens of us. The meme. Man. <laughs> you know, wow. if this I will I will say though, I will buy this card if it's like under 20 bucks. I don't cuz I'm not a collector and I don't only, have that money. It, it looks to only be in cold foil. I will play this card if I pull it. cold foil, it's, it's never going to be It's going to be low. extremely rare and I yeah. still think the price is going to actually be kind of reasonable on it because the demand is going to be so low. Here's the oh. thing. Anyone who's actually playing UPF is either going to play by the event rules and not play this card because it's trash for them. True. Or it's going to be a home game and they're going to say, fuck it. We don't need to buy this card and put it in our deck. We're going to start with it. We're going to print it. Or we're going to start with we're it on the field. We're going to proxy it. We're going to proxy it one. it or whatever. Two. Yeah. There's, like, there this is, card is yeah. dead on release. So in like, Magic, this is yeah on top of the rule them cementing this rule which i think is a massive mistake they could have literally if they had printed this card without that line of text fine totally fine i think it's a massive mistake for them to print it with the text that says you can attack any player at the table no that's not what you should that's a mistake to cement that rule as like either you have made this card superfluous by changing the rule it's down the road and then this card's value is literally nothing and then you just printing it cold foil is a waste or you've screwed yourself by not being able to change the rule i, I think, yeah so my opinion on the talk rule, of having yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, my opinion on the rule has changed not a lot but a little so i have played a lot of games of upf with the new product the new round the table professor product and it's uh Kevin, can you respond to Captive Goat? Um, sure. So, uh, I played a lot of the Round the Table product, and I fully believe that it's attacking to your right and left is not that bad if the cards have ways to interact with the entire table. The limiting factor of you can only yes. attack to your right and left with Round the Table actually feels 
more freeing when you are able to hit across the table and it feels like you found a reward or a way to do it right so like mm, once you've got sure. the headpiece on teclavasen or yeah. if i'm playing bravant i've been playing bravant with 40 chivalries and it's great you're a dork yes and you block <laughs> for somebody on the other side of the table that is a hundred times better than defending for someone on the other side of the table. Or, I mean, uh, than attacking someone on the other side of the table. Because it's like, yes. I'm, UBS, influencing, yes. 100%. Yeah, I'm influencing politics across the table in any way is just so much better. Uh, so I feel like, I feel like if you have one of those heroes in your game, you kind of want to do the attack to your right and left. And if you don't have it, mm. It's you do want the ability to attack everyone, but I'm not fully set on that. I also did play a six player game at Dungeons and Dining. We did. You can only attack and target to your right and left. And we are so glad we did. If you could attack anyone sure. in a six player game, that turns into chaos. Sure. It, it, not it, even fun it, chaos. It's just absurd. Yeah. If you're, <laughs> in a, if you're in more than a game with more than four people, sure. I understand yeah. putting that rule in place, but the standard for UPF is going to be four players because Commander exists. Initially, like, the standard was five people when the when UPF came I out. I think that's troll, which was a little troll, but um, I and I can kind of see it, but like it's just it, people are going to want to play is, pots of four tables, seat four it's people. Also physically, yeah, it's physically yeah. unwieldy to seat five people for a game like that. Um, I'm not big on the card. I'm not going to be buying it, even though I am going to be using it. There are a lot of people in Magic, though that bling out their commander decks. It is not absurd for an individual to want to be a collector and a casual player. Uh, and yes. I feel like those people would want this card, but there's not enough casual players. There are collectors, yes. but there's not enough casual players yet. UPF there, needs to get there bigger. There is more demand for Blood of the Drakai than there is for this card. That's, that's a bold statement. That's sad. <laughs> I, I think it's true. We'll see. I guess we'll see what Blood the prices are. High, then we'll play this card. Oh my and gosh! There's roughly the same number of collectors. Probably more we'll people play Blood of the Jakai in their UPF decks too. Um, let's let's pivot to the Emperor. True. Uh, let's pivot to the next conversation. Do you want to go get our our first caller for tonight? Sure. I appreciate that. I'm gonna read out uh, some freaking follows since last week we got donzai banzai followed us agro blaze 96 because somebody on this stream uh told us to told him to clearly and then also scowling flesh bag thank you i appreciate it getting a shout out, getting a shout out on your stream was actually really nice but also uh getting to talk to you um in the stream was super cool too uh so you started streaming in order to just get better at the game Yes, that's, that's the more? goal. Um, yeah, yeah, just just play more, get better. I've been a I've been a pro player. I've just played Rhino for like most of the time, so mm -hmm. I had to diversify and at least know what other heroes do. Yeah. So like I get I get what you said earlier on about specializing, but if you don't know what your opponent is gonna do and what Absolutely. their power attacks Absolutely. look like, their power turns, yes. you don't know how to react. And if you know, it just gives you a leg up as when you're just like, well, I guess I'll just see what they do, right? So, yeah. It's like uh, if if someone wanted to get good at like uh, some kind of like um, uh, what's like a League of Legends kind of game, you'd want to wiki all the characters, but then you'd want to play just one. Uh, and that's kind of what you're doing by doing that, because in Flesh and Blood, the game is so difficult, you have to you have to you definitely i feel like you have to play the deck to fully wrap your head around what they want in the game um yeah so yeah that's super that, yeah. cool that goes, but we that goes have our to... yeah yeah we have our first uh caller on the show caller what's your name and where are you calling from uh call caller mm -hmm. she was here well oh, caller Okay. Huh? Oh. oh, muted. Unmuted. We're trying again. Nope. Are they allowed to talk? Oh, they no. should be allowed to talk. They should be. Yeah, it would it would say if they weren't allowed to talk. Yeah. Okay. Well, 
What the heck? Um, do you want to leave and come back? Or do you want to... Actually, it might be easier if you move them and then move them back in, obviously. Um, Wait, let's just see. Okay, okay. See if they can talk to each other in there. Um, oh, yeah. You need okay, so I'm I'm gonna pitch it one more time. You need a you need a corner three people and play a game of UPF. Or at least specifically do you do you have that's the question I should ask. Do you have round the table product? I do or not. know someone? Do you know someone who has it? Maybe. It's great. Is all I'm gonna I think say. I do. It's great. I, yeah. So I think I'm going to propose to the tournament organizer of my local armory that we do a UPF night, you know, once a yeah. quarter or so uh, yeah. and get a chance to play it. Definitely want to try it out. It's it's super interesting. Even, I mean... Yeah, I can. Whoa! Oh, oh. You're fine. I'm just going to... I'm going to turn your volume down. Caller, uh, caller, who... who uh, what's, what's your name? Where are you calling from? Hi, I'm Allison, but most people on the internet just know me as Goat. You are the goat. Uh, what do you want to talk about oh, on the show? Really? No problem. I want to tell you about how absolute trash Decimator Great Axe is. That is That's... ruining the great class of warrior. It has made the floor for warrior this garbo blue vest that blocks three. It makes me want to curl up and die. Like, go back to Guardian with that garbage. Absolute rubbish bin material. This is some very oh, PG nonsense. language out of you, and I really appreciate that. Um, well, I didn't want to get your show, like, fucking canceled or something. <laughs> 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 oops. Uh, oops. Uh, so, uh, can you elaborate on that? Like, more specifically, what's wrong with uh, this uh, Guardian weapon? Well, the point of the Guardian class is to keep all the IQ-70 people in one place. <laughs> And by adding in the decimated great axe, you expand that pool. Like it is, it is. You, it's, I hold a blue and I swing and I block with everything else. I, I don't have to think about anything else. You could, you could take a full time job and still play that while doing it all at the same time. It's ridiculous. I, I can't believe we've turned our great card game into a block with three cards, swing with the other fest. Go back to Guardian with that garbage. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, do you do you want to cover this first, Simon? What's your opinion on uh, Decimator Great X? Actually, I'm gonna read it real quick. Uh, so so I'm or, I'm, yeah, I'm a Reiner player, right? So I I love X in any kind of warrior. Bring it on! It's like try blocking. Sure. I mean. I want you to block. I want you to want to block. That's I, absolutely fine with me. I, 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 I think that's it's a good thing. Yeah, mm. I agree. I, you know what? You should punish every warrior who dares bring that thing. <laughs> you should grind them into the dirt. So let me let me Go read back the, the guardian. <laughs> let me read the card real quick. <laughs> so it's a warrior weapon axe two handed. Uh, once per turn action, pay three attack. Sounds like a guardian card. First time you've defended, but uh, first time this is defended by a non equipment card. Each turn, half the base of target defending card rounded up. Three becomes two, uh, and it comes in for four. So it's that pay one card, deal four damage, and then it's also hard to block. Uh, or at least you need, you know, two full cards to block it out. And one card's only blocking, like, if you only block with one card. You're only getting two value out of it instead of the normal three um, for most class cards and 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 quality cards. Um, your sync it's, below becomes two. Yeah, your sync below. I was gonna say below. if you if you if you play sync if you play a defense two. reaction like I do, then you lose even more value. Oh my gosh. Um, that's, that's an, like Nixie was right. Nixie was absolutely one hundred percent right. Its purpose is to make other classes scared to run D reacts into Dory. Are you getting the axe? Are you getting the sword? You don't know. So on one hand, thank you, the 70 IQ people piloting this deck, but also it's garbage. Okay. They're, they mean... aren't helping me out, though. If you run less d racks into me, I'd appreciate it. So it, <laughs> so it is good for that reason, right? I mean, We're yeah, slowly developing really, a reason like, that's good. Terrorism's good. good. <laughs> oh, my gosh. 
<laughs> so all right okay 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 so kevin uh tell us tell us what's so what uh, give us a reason for decimator great axe like this card why it should exist or yeah why, why it should, it should it, why it either talk talk to me about it like okay so it <laughs> like guardian just does this better true Guardian gets an offhand. Also true. Yeah, so like, Guardian gets this and they only have to carry it in one hand. Yeah, um, exactly. Little, little, little weak Send warriors need two hands for a three for four weapon. Mm. You got that one axe card that gives it plus six, so then it ends up coming in for like ten. And then if That's they use... Swing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then if they use like red unmovable, that just blocks for five four four red on move four yeah i mean like it has it has its use I mean, cases if you wanted to play glacial footsteps just play glacial footsteps <laughs> that's a three card True. ten it's just thunderquake True. yeah <sighs> for yeah. one card out of your deck it's just thunderquake <laughs> is is there well, to be fair, it's a thunderquake yeah. with a little bit of evasion a tiny bit just play bravo so what if so what if you're like an intermediate like myself and you're like mm. you know you're not gunning for the pro tour but you're also trying to win uh and you, you have a warrior? well you have let's say the individual has a preference for the concept of playing a warrior with axes right you played mm -hmm. axes dory and got absolutely bodied because you played axes dory like hatchet of mind and hatchet of body uh is if if you want to cosplay on the board a warrior with an axe is it this one or is it the hatchets the, the hatchets are the honorable way yeah <laughs> or merciless but, battle axe even uh, but well, which but which of no them <laughs> but which of them are the best like which one of them are merciless the battle axe is better for the game true it's the more elegant way to play warrior it's also just going to be better after heavy hitters true actually wait hold on a minute there's there's a lot of cards that just say target warrior attack and uh or next warrior attack yeah yeah, yeah. and then they they don't mm -hmm. necessarily care if it's a sword or an axe or whatever mm -hmm. um or like Blade keep... Fury can target the hatchets, and you can get both of them pretty easily by just giving them go again with our now enhanced agility token schemes. So is okay. We'll go back to let's go back to uh, a playstyle, right? So that's why you don't like the axe, right? It's the block with three cards, pitch of blue. It's brain dead. Is it is the least fun way to play this game? It's okay. sitting down with your opponent and going. Would you like to see my cards? I'll defend with them, and we can talk about them as I defend with them. Wouldn't it be cool if I could play this card against you? And your opponent would be like, that would be a cool card you played, but I'm glad you defended with it. Uh, is is Fi a fun deck? Yeah, of course. You just All you do is you just lay your hand out in front of them. It's not that, you know, yeah. it's, it's pretty small brain. Right? I, I'm, look... I'm not so concerned about Phi because it's a small brain thing that takes about 10 minutes to resolve. Whereas Decimator Great Axe <laughs> is a small brain thing that takes about that's half a millennium okay, to resolve. Okay, okay. You know, that's so fair. my argument was going to be, that's you know, fair. that's another, you know, small brain thing is to go full aggro, but like at least it's, you know, it's wrapped up at a decent time. That is pretty fair. <laughs> at least go get a drink afterwards. <laughs> So do you put Decimator yeah. Great Axe in your sideboard just to scare I people? I would never play Decimator No, no, just no, you just put it in the sideboard so they have to think about it when they look at your deck list. You misunderstand. I they... have a restraining mm. order. Decimator Great Axe <laughs> isn't allowed within 100 feet of me. <laughs> that wait, also, is, it, is it that way or the other way? If... <laughs> uh, True. Means, that's a matter of interpretation. <laughs> You have Great a restraining order against Great but I plan to enforce it. <laughs> <laughs> the other side of that is you, they're not going to see your deck list because you're not making top eight with this in your list. <laughs> it's a one of. You can put a one of in the list somewhere, right? You just drop that in, 
take out one of your oasis respites or something i don't know what warriors play didn't, didn't some meme lord do that with kano like yes. at a battle hardened or something mm -hmm. uh at the realm yeah. 20k uh both majin bay and peter bedensic registered 64 card kano lists and then filled the other eight slots with like threadbare tunic uh reinforced the line nourishing <laughs> emptiness that they didn't play into anything uh imperial warhorn i think was another card i feel um, like they have like zealous belting too they might that's have. funny that's funny i think they might have just for when the uh when they had the nourishing to pitch <laughs> Yeah, when I when I played my challenge on stream and I had to play Kano, that's yeah. one of the lists that I found. I was like, ho, ho, no, this no, yeah, yeah, something is wrong here. Let let me go find a different list to play. <laughs> no, that list is yeah, solid. They, it's just don't play they, the sideboard. Yeah, they said they yeah, spent well, like a solid like hour and a half the night before figuring out justifications for all the sideboard cards if either of them made top eight and the lists got published. <laughs> and then it happened. <laughs> That's pretty funny. All right, how there, much? A couple of meme lords. You said you played ten of each hero, right? Ten games of each hero. Yes. Okay. Have yes. you played with Decimator Great Axe? Yes. Yes. It was. We yes, got it one. Was probably. It was probably the longest, um, most <laughs> boring streams that I had. I'm not gonna lie. It it took the most time that I Each needed to get through a ten Amen. ten games was with Decimator X Dorinthia. That was like that was just Rick. It's excruciating. Ooh. What was your win rate? <laughs> oh, that's a good question. Nine I, out of ten. I think I won a fair bit actually. No. Yo, <laughs> yo. What, what was your win rate without yeah. your opponents dying of old age and boredom? <laughs> They they probably just quit like halfway through half the time. Holy uh, that's that's probably what happened. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> mm. Oh my gosh, I, it's, I can't think of anything else to talk about this great axe. Uh, this this uh, great American axe. Um, do you have any more? Anything but. <laughs> do you have any, you into, into dust. <laughs> do you have any more? Uh, anything else you want to say about it? Uh, captive goat. Well, you know what? I I appreciate that it exists, but um, we need to stop using it. We need to have a com total and complete ban on it, and uh, no more. Get rid of it. You don't have to ban it. Don't worry. It just it'll it'll fade into nothingness on its own. Um, I, thank you. I hope all the brute players kill it. Good. And the guardian players. Yes, and everyone else. Uh, thank you so much for the call. Anything you want to shout out? Like our Patreon? Uh, yeah. Yeah, come hang out in purple chat in the warrior rooms. We post a lot of memes. We'll, we'll sort out how to post spoilers and other hypertext things. It's, it's so cool. Um, come hang out. Y'all are learning to be civil in there, right? Yeah, I only caused like oh. three fights this week. So I went in because we talked about this last time you were on about, you know, the toxicity or at least the mannerisms of... Uh, the warrior chat in purple discord and i went in there and i started scrolling through it and there was a lot of not warrior players i don't know if that's the case for all the channels because i pretty much only look at the upf one and it's only people who want to play upf but there was a lot of wizards in the warrior chat talking yeah crap <laughs> i was like what the yeah. frick yeah that happens what? a lot and i what i tried frick? to fix it by lying to them about there being a secret warrior cult and telling them that if they got yellow names, they could join the cult. And then they all got yellow names. And then there was no cult or secret discord. And then they all called me scammer goat. And so now <laughs> is calling me scammer goat. Sounds like a, uh, <laughs> what a trip. Holy frick. Maybe I need to join. Maybe I need to join, change my name to yellow on discord. Holy it's, frick. it's really the only way to be <laughs> all right well uh thank you so much for the call we'll catch you next time right yeah um i mean i'll certainly try heck yes heck yes and remember don't don't do decimator great acts kids not even once or drugs all right bye all right bye, bye. thank you
All right. <laughs> that was a trip, as always. Thank you, Allison. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, so the n the next thing I was going to bring up. All right. We'll just we'll just immediately roll. Unless anyone else has anything else they wanted to say about those, about decimated radax. No, you good. I'm the next good. thing next thing I was going to bring up uh, was uh, Kano. Mm. Is Kano good? Right. Okay. I, okay. I'm talking about CC competitive meta. Mm -hmm. We're going into insert season here and heavy hitter, uh, season. heavy hitter season and we're you know we're looking at the big events on the horizon do i need to be scared of kano going to events like do i need to be prepping for that he's you he's the last it. you need to respect it but like is that a deck i should be expecting like not just respect but expect for so th this question depends on if you're asking about RTNs or Battle Hardened Plus. Battle Hardened Plus, big events. I, uh, uh, things I'm going to be watching on TV. Well, if you're watching on TV, that's dope. We made it. Um, yeah. Well, if, okay. My TV is literally just my computer plugged your into TV the TV. Is YouTube. Yeah, my TV <laughs> is YouTube. Uh, but yes. Uh, uh, you should expect at any Battle Hardened Plus event for there to be exactly five Kanos. <laughs> that's so specific it doesn't matter how big the event is but like it could be 50 people and there's just, gonna be five, five yes Every exactly time. five yes okay at the pro tour right. pro tour there will be five to eight kanos at any calling there's gonna be five to eight kanos in any battle hard and there's gonna be five to eight kanos and that's they will the always be paired up against the one person who didn't bring a b yes they will be yeah. paired against the person who didn't bring a b and they will be paired against uh each other but kano's good right now right <laughs> Like he's like, uh, a, can, yes. Like, can you feel can, Kano's a real deck? Like, if someone's like, I'm bringing Kano. I think that I think I should to this event. I'm gonna bring Kano. Like, your your understandable your your understanding of a mindset like that. You you have to be a very experienced Kano player. But yes, like okay. if the person is a longtime Kano player, you can absolutely bring Kano to an event to a Battle Harden Plus event. Should I be concerned about the? Uh, a rising number of Kano players. Like, no. as it gets better, more people start playing it, maybe. I shouldn't uh, be concerned no, about, but, like, you show up to an event and it's, like, the third most played deck there or something like that? Fifth most played? Nope. So, really? here's the thing. Oh, yeah, go ahead, mm. Simon. When, yeah. when you say gets better, like, just be, because in the context of the meta that Kano moves, right? It's not like Kano as the deck itself got better yes yeah. yes and also as people are like figuring it out more right so like you know you have a you know let's pretend every week you have 20 more people pick up kano one of them fall in love with it and start doing it like just just grinding kano like kano numbers go up right yeah you still only need to worry about the five to eight kanos <laughs> like i'm not so kidding you just dodge him yeah, like you're going to either get the Kano that knows what they're doing and you you need to respect it, or you're going to get the Kano that doesn't know what they're doing and because you respect it, you beat them. <laughs> yeah. Like, it... <sighs> Kano is not a, car a hero that you just pick up and do well with at events. Okay. He's not. Mm. Like, anyone who is picking up Kano right now is not going to be a threat by the end of heavy hitter season unless they've played literally five to ten games of kano a day like they well, might okay so like like let's say the like deck is good it is let's let's say like mid last year someone picked up kano and they're like yeah they're hitting their probably... stride right about now like there's yeah there's... you have to respect them there's an i i feel like there has to be a number of kano players rising that should be respected like we're not losing Kano players. I don't Right? Like no one if you so. if you master Kano, we're... you're not losing Kano players. Like you're just like you now are a Kano player and it's branded on your forehead and everyone can see yes. it. Yes. Yes. Um I don't think so here's the thing. If we were ever at a point going to gain Kano players, it was when Icelander LL. Hmm. And well, I don't okay. think we gained that many Kano players. Well, no, you 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 gain them then, and they're good now. 
they've had time to cook. I don't think we I don't think we gained that many. Oh, frick. Because all the people who I who I knew who played Icelander, the ones who went to Kano played Kano before Icelander. Or they switch or the Icelander players went to another deck. Okay. I That's, didn't go to Kano. Okay. Yeah. True. I know a lot of Icelander players who did not go to Kano, and that's also because half the Icelander players were Prism refugees. Yeah, true. That that was definitely <laughs> true. All right. So they went to Dromai, or they are going to New Prism. Yeah, but so, also they're both wizards, but they play completely different, right? Yes. Yes. Very so it's different. Like, it's not like it's yeah. yeah. It, it's well, Icelander plays closer of- to other classes than she does Kano, like in yes. some respects. Yeah. In most respects. As someone who didn't play a lot of Icelander, I'm going to say most respects until you correct me. Uh. (laughs) In in, in most respects. Like, I I genuinely think Icelander... Like, Icelander was a wizard and that she could play stuff as instants. But even then, half of the instants she played didn't deal arcane damage. Mm. Even though Cold Snap basically said it did arcane... (laughs) Yeah, Cold Snap said it did Arcane. Cold Cold Snap said, and then you swing Waning Moon. And uh, then swing Waning Moon. And then for swing free. Waning Moon for free. Um Yeah, no, like it was like CLF was the best thing Icelander had, and it wasn't burn. True. True. Yeah. It was just it was just hold on a it minute. It was ice. It was ice. Uh like Okay, so that they okay. Are, they're very far from the same hero, and it's mm-hmm. still the closest hero to Kano. And so like, we're, that's how that's how far removed Kano is mm-hmm. from the current lexicon of flesh and blood heroes. Like it's so that's that's where my take of uh, I'm scared. So I'll I'll give you the background of where it came from. My opinion of I am now scared of Kano at events was we had an armory. Which obviously is the highest tier event that I, I can imagine. Honestly, I heard uh, about these. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I've heard of I them. I can relate. <laughs> I qualify. So I qualified for an armory, and so I show up, and round one, well done. round one, Kano. Uh, I'm playing Michael Hamilton's Bravo list, uh, so I lose because I'm not Michael Hamilton, uh, and it only has AB one. Uh, round two, I get the buy. Round three, Good, you have to win. I play a different Kano. We had three rounds of that armory. <laughs> I played two Kanos and a buy with my one AB Bravo deck. <laughs> it was the saddest thing, and that's why I'm scared of Kano now. I'm going back to my AB seven, and I'm gonna hide in a hole. <laughs> All right, I, uh, wait, can you actually play AB seven? You can run AB Rusted Relics. Oh, Rusted Relics. Can you run two offhands? No, you can't run two offhands. So AB5 on Bravo? Yeah. Uh, Simon, uh, Mr. Simon, uh, is there anything else you want to talk about? Uh, Because I think we might have time for one more topic of discussion if you want to. Um, Do I want to talk about anything else? I think... What do you think? If we just want to segue all the way back to the start of let's do it. Let's do it. That's what we're show. here for. Right, Bad segues. I, I made. I, I have a lot of notes, right? We we let's didn't go. even cover like a third of that. So oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We go back to it. Sure. No. So so I think honestly, a lot of the controversies that we see and all the drama that we see in Flesh and Blood, in my opinion, is because LSS is not super good at communicating. And I think a lot of this could be fixed if they communicate clearly at the right time on the right forum. So just as an example, right? Okay. okay. When when this whole thing came up with the XP, um, I was arguing, so I was like, well, what are we going to do with XP and what are armories? And somebody said, yeah, well, James White said on the podcast, this and that <laughs> about, you know, it's, it's supposed to be armories like casual and XP is casual. It's like, yeah, fine, but it's not my job to listen to three different podcasts, read two blogs and one news post to understand the whole context of what they're trying to tell us. <laughs> so if they just kind of learn to put all the information in the right spot, a lot of the drama that we experience 
could be avoided. That's my hot take. Mm -hmm. Ooh, that is a good hot take. Um, I, the first thing I'm going to say I'm is you said you haven't played other TCGs, right? Correct. So you don't know how bad Magic the Gathering is at PR because they're worse. I have no idea. They are. Oh, it's it's I genuinely know. worse. How? It's. <laughs> Well, I mean, they well, fired well, like half one. The people well, yeah, one for... they fired half the people oh. over this whatever, but then they had like an AI controversy where, like, specifically oh, the yeah. part that talks about like uh, uh, them being bad at communicating is people are like, "Hey, it looks like you're using AI art in this. You said you'd never do that." Uh, instead of researching, they just doubled down on their take and said, "Nah, you wrong," which is very yeah. funny publicly on Twitter, right? So that was where they decided yes. to make their post to let people know that they don't use AI or to double down on, you know, whatever. That was just Twitter. That's where they decided to make that, you know, groundbreaking post. It wasn't like in an mm. article or something like that. So uh, Flesh and Blood ha does better than some card games. Uh, oh, MetaZoo. MetaZoo stopped talking to people recently. Like, they just well, stopped. They just they won't answer emails, which I heard the, about. The, the bar is underground <laughs> for that. Come yes. On. <laughs> no, I'm saying the bar is underground for LSS, and they're doing a great job of just walking on the ground. They're not, they're not doing a good job at communication compared to what they're, you would think of not, for a company. It's not stellar. It's not stellar, but it's not. Yeah, it could be worse. Yeah. So, it, oh, go ahead. I Kevin. will. I will say on the note of like, oh, he said this in a podcast. It's like I would rather him say any little nugget of information in a podcast just to like, so that we know that something is happening. If the full information isn't ready to come out, I'd rather them say something there than nothing. Because I want to know, like, that it is on their radar, it's on the map, it's going to happen. I have enough faith in LSS to, and maybe I'm being a total apologist here and chill. I know it's I William's gig. I am. But, like, I, I'm willing to to give them a little bit of leeway on stuff like that, where it's like, I trust that they'll have something. There's a lot that they're a relatively small com company for how big this game is. And they are taking on, they are themselves taking on a lot. Like they are trying to do as mu so much stuff. So I'm willing to give them a little bit of leeway and I'd rather have that little nugget, even if it means I will miss some of those because I'm not gonna watch every piece of content, yeah. I'm not. I'd rather have that little nugget than Why not? Me, me and you definitely do though. We watch a lot of their content. Yes. Me and you consume most of it, which is unfair um, yeah. expectation to have on anybody else. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, like, I don't put that expectation on other people. And if no. people say, hey, this is happening, they'll be like, this is, or like, they haven't said anything about this. And I'd be like, well, we think what's going to happen is this. They've talked a little bit about it, but we don't have anything official. Like, all the combined ELO stuff. Like, we have little bits and pieces. We don't have anything confirmed. And still, I'd like to have it before RTN season starts, but we'll see. Uh, like, your thoughts, that Simon? kind of thing. It's 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 not good enough. Yet. I think doing I I I I get what you're saying, but at the same time, yeah. I work in a field where communication is extremely important, and if I mess up what I communicate, like things will hit the fan really fast, really badly, yes. and it's not yeah. that difficult. Like like the person that put out that post. That was probably mm. scheduled, right? It was like it was going to go out. And that person didn't push the button and say, "Now it goes out now." And I finished it ten minutes yeah. ago. This was scheduled it, a week ago, right? It was they they and knew. Yeah, yeah. The person that knew that it was going to go out knew that James White did the interview with Fluke and Box, and they mm -hmm. knew this information was out there. And it would have then probably taken about half an hour to add that additional information in there to just to make it. It's like, of course, it's out there, and I agree with you. It's better to be out there. Because sure. I watch a lot of this stuff as well. Um, I have a dog. I walk him a lot. I listen to his stuff. But, <laughs> but at the same time, it's like, make it easy for people because I'm sorry if I'm offending anybody, but he, people are lazy. Like, yes. people will not go out and search their information. They, they need it all. If they will even yes. read the article, that'll be, you know, that because they'll just like, oh, 
can you be Google for me? They'll right? they'll read the title and like the first no. three sentences and you know it it better be That's in like there. That's like when I go on Reddit, yeah. like I read the headline and then I form <laughs> an opinion of what's going on. <laughs> no, I I 100% yes. agree with you. Make it easy for people. Like I, yes. I agree, they should make it easy for people. Like I come from uh I went I was in grad school. I got my PhD. I was in academia for eight years, including undergrad. You, you write academic papers, and your job is to make it easy for the person reading it like it, it should be easy for them to get the information so I'm, is i'm sorry i've oh, never boy. in my life read an academic piece of paper that was easy to read <laughs> yes, because most <laughs> most people are bad at doing that but it is your job as the writer to make it as easy as oh, possible God, while getting all the fair. information across. i'm not saying we're good at it yeah, but fair. I agree. Like, well, it's very humble of you to include topic, yourself, right? So it is. Yes. Oh, so yeah. that's what I was going to get to. Yes. Is making it easy on the reader probably means brevity, right? You need to get the point out quickly and concisely. Yes. Can you account to any of this article not including this very I'm going to say niche information that matters to us really specifically? Is is not for the sake of brevity. They don't include that. Should they should they do the whole article and then just also have disclaimers at the bottom explaining? Well, this is what you know. If for the sake of brevity, we weren't going to necessarily talk about um, uh, what it's, combined elo means, but this is what a combined elo means at the bottom. No, or something. but but it's so easy. It's one sentence. It's like five or six <laughs> letters. It's like we will inform you about what combined elo is in the oh, coming okay. days. Yeah, that's or, it. That's all you or, need to do. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, that Even makes if sense. It's something cool. like that. Yeah. Like I'm cool with something like that. But like they have written like the last band and suspended where they did all the LL changes was so freaking long. <laughs> <laughs> like because they restricted like seven cards in LL. And like that was if you printed it out, it was probably like four pages. That's the longest mm. ban and suspended they've had since I started playing the game. Mm. Like, I'm okay with those posts going into as much detail as you need. Like, that was the other piece of, like, learning how to write in academia is, like, you, there's no, it doesn't yeah. matter how long it is. It is as long as it needs to be. Yeah. This isn't long yeah. enough. I, I, it needs a few more lines in it the it, it uh, needs, nationals it needs, it needs to be longer because it has it needs to communicate more information it has gaps and the only that way it needs to do to that fill. effectively yeah and the only way to do that effectively is to add more words to it just literally <laughs> like fair enough fair enough i'm okay with that okay okay yeah interesting yeah. no so. i i i think we're i think we're all mostly in agreement um yeah but at the at the same time like you know, I'm I I would still definitely pull the whole. They've been like making this card game for, you know, X years, but they've only been a company for like five or whatever. So like, yes, give them. I mean, and, communication and is important, and time, but like they're they're doing the, they're juggling so many things right now, right? And at the same no, time, uh, no, absolutely, they have been continuously getting better at it. That's another point. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Yes, right. So if year over yes. year you're getting better yes. communication then i don't feel bad i'm just impatient <laughs> i'm impatient yes. i'm impatient for 20 you know 2030 when their communication is boom and the 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 yeah. prize pool is a billion and uh <laughs> and i'm funny we're, we're on our that's like <laughs> we're, yeah we're on the third you know uh bravo iteration you know the fourth or fifth bravo now or something we so we the, have 20 so guardians the problem with that is right it's like mm -hmm. i get it they're young and they're growing and they're learning however you're competing about against a game that has existed for 30 or more years right or almost 30 years right mm -hmm. every year about 10 tcgs fail right there's three tcgs in this world that survived for a significant amount of time that are alive today right it's it's magic pokemon Yu-Gi-Oh. You know, everything else is kind of noise, right? So if you want to make it in the space with a not with a basically an IP that you know nobody recognizes, you got to do better, right? You got to be 
you got to be on top of yeah. the game when it comes to stuff like this, right? You, you can't, because it's so easy to fail. It takes one bad set, one bad, you know, piece of information going out, one, you know, missed thing, whatever, and you're gone. Well, it's they, like, it's, they it's, have definitely done those things, though. <laughs> yeah. No, but true. Go ahead, yeah, go ahead. But, I, not to interrupt you, but go ahead. No, it's it's like for reasons. I looked at how many TCGs existed, and it's like there's over 400 TCGs, and there's like 380 nobody remembers, and th some of them existed for you know years. It's like this is really competitive. Nobody. Yeah. It's not a field. It's like you know. It's like not a field where it comes like, and everyone's like, "Oh yeah, I was waiting for this." Like, "Oh, thank you." It's like it's it's you gotta fight for your it. spot, and it's every single set you release, every press release, everything you do is gonna be under the magnifying glass. And let's be honest, we are nerds. We love to overanalyze things, right? So you you gotta realize people are gonna read into it, and you got just gotta be on top of it. Like so, it's like I agree. it's just yeah. I I'd love for them to be better, but I understand why you know sometimes things happen, and you know maybe there's reasons that I don't know. It's like I love to complain, so <laughs> yeah, that's why I'm a sculling flashback. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's a good full circle. I think I think the uh, the last thing I'll say to that is I think there are so I I fully agree that they need to not just be as good as the top three. They need to be better. And I think yes, in yes. at least one solid respect, most people who had a critical eye and understand most of the TCGs going on in the space right now, this is a hot take. I think Flesh and Blood definitely has the best competitive, if not the best competitive circuit right now, it's just like the game at the competitive level is just solid. And the circuit yes. is well put together and thought out and it's like, it's doing its thing. And it's only getting it's so better. good. It's so Magic solid. Magic restarted theirs. It's so good. Like yeah. <laughs> Magic True. restarted Pro Tours because Flesh and Blood stepped in and just showed up. Yeah. Like yeah. Magic's still like, the best it, at casual gaming. Like it has yes. to be right. Like it, it's yeah. huge. Um, yeah. Pokemon still absolutely dominates like younger age groups. Lorcana's yeah. like trying to step and in, but Eastern. Pokemon, yeah, in and Eastern, Eastern and yeah, absolutely. Uh, Yu Gi Oh is massive in countries outside of the U.S., but it's still really big in the U.S. Yeah, um, it's still number three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, th these are all massive games. Flesh and Blood has their foot in the ring, though. Uh, yeah, they're not yeah. top three, but they're they're in the tournament bracket. And I, my yeah. my earnest expectation is that flesh of blood sticks around um in the you know the years that i've been following it but that's kind of the exciting part i'm excited to see where it goes um yeah i want to see it go up let's see that all right um but think, yeah i agree yeah. they need to they need to step up at least uh they, they also acknowledge yeah the mistakes that they make like that's they they know yeah where their shortcomings are they know where they are and they do they do move to fix them like yeah which is why i'm willing to like i don't have faith necessarily that we'll have an a combined elo system outlined for us by the exact start of rtns i have faith that they're a company who's going to try to do that and that is my that faith is i'm going to be playing will... this until i'm dead now that, i mean so, yeah, well, I we don't know how long I'm gonna live, you, but you yeah, know. unless you live a short <laughs> life. <laughs> so, so I I've never really played any other TCGs like in any serious way, but I've tried a few since I started playing TC, like Flesh and Blood, and I can honestly say it's the best gameplay loop of every any game that I've seen in the TCG TCG space. Right? It's just like it's yeah. so snappy, it's so good, it's so tight. It's like just a ga the simple gameplay loop is very, very good. And I think it's probably better over anything else that I've tried. Um, I, I shudder every time I need to put down carts and then, you know, <laughs> turn them for mana, whatever. Yeah. It's like, well, what are you doing? Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, it's, it's uh, also, uh, it's, uh, yeah. It, it's, it's also I mean, great. Final yeah. <laughs> Here, you go ahead. Oh, you go ahead. You go ahead. All right. Uh, You're good. Uh, just finally, it was like, I I'm, 
they're learning and they're getting better, right? So all I'm yeah. saying is, if you want to avoid yes. the drama, this is what you need to work on. Like, if, yes. if you don't communicate clearly, you generate drama, you have to be aware of that. And if you want to address that, then that's how you address it. Yeah, that's good. Good point. I appreciate yeah. that. And I think unless there's anything else we want to talk about, we start to wrap it up. Does that sound good? I'll anything else? That. Good. All right. Well, uh, the, as I said, that wraps it up. Uh, uh, where can people find you and what do you want to shout out? Mr. Uh, Scowling Simon. <laughs> so I stream flesh and blood four times a week on Twitch. That is Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. Woo. I usually for start at 4 PM GMT. I would like to shout out my own stream. <laughs> yes. Um, Yes. Um, at the moment, I'm very focused on sealed and draft because the calling um, Liverpool is coming up and I want to do well there. And generally, I'm just trying to, as we said, try to qualify for the Pro Tour Amsterdam. That's my big goal. But I just want to have a lot of fun streaming and, and I hope people enjoy it. Uh, I also have a YouTube channel and you kind of can find me everywhere with you, if you just put in Scowling Flashback and you'll find me there on Twitter and Instagram and TikTok. I've been watching, yeah, I've been watching your TikToks. Yeah. I'm watching your TikToks. Those are actually good. Um, I've been really Thank enjoying you. it. Uh, Kevin, do you have any shout outs? Thanks for having me. Oh, no, no trouble. Go ahead, Kevin. Anything? No, nothing. All right. Well, no. thank you so much for watching. See you next week. Bye. Bye. <laughs>